Welcome back, mathematicians. We're going to do a CGI problem together today. So the first step is always read the problem. So it says, Mrs. Clark blew blank bubbles outside. Mila ran to pop blank of them. So Mrs. Clark blew blank more bubbles. How many bubbles are left in the air? So the next step to any word problem is to visualize. What do you see is happening? So you can close your eyes and you can see what's happening, or you can watch the little video to the left and see what is actually um, happening. Then we normally retell the story. So I cover up the words and we retell in our own words. So that way I know you're understanding, but we can't do that here. So let's just reread it together. So read out loud with me. Mrs. Clark blew blank bubbles outside. Mila ran to pop blank of them. So Mrs. Clark blew blank more bubbles. How many bubbles are left in the air? Okay, so if we were to think about what is happening here, what do we know? So is there action in the story? Let's think. If I am blowing bubbles, the action is creating bubbles and Mila runs to pop them. So the action is to pop the bubble. So we know that there are bubbles in this guy and then some of them get popped. Then the next action is that I blow more bubbles. So our question is that we don't know is, is how many bubbles are left in the sky or left in the air? So what do we need to know? How many bubbles are left? But this sounds like a two-step problem. So that means we have a hidden question. Let's go ahead and look at our numbers that we have. So our first number set is going to be 124 bubbles that I blew in the air. Mila came and she popped 36 of them. Then I blew 79 more bubbles. So there's our number set for today. We have 124, 36, and 79. So if we were to put it into the equation, it would read that I blew 124 bubbles and Mila popped 36. If we pop some bubbles, what, what um, action is that in mathematical terms? We're taking those bubbles away. We're taking them out of the sky. So as an operation, would we be adding or subtracting? We're subtracting them out of the sky. So our equation would be 124 minus 36. That's going to get us to an unanswered question here. I mean, our unanswered um, difference here. So here's our hidden question. What, are, what am I looking at right here? I am looking at how many are left in the sky after Mila pops them. Okay, so our hidden question Now remember, a hidden question means we have to solve for this before we can answer the final question of how many bubbles are left in the air. So the hidden question here is, remember I started with 124 bubbles in the air and Mila popped 36 of them. So the question would be, pause for effect, just kidding. The question would be, how many bubbles are in the air after Mila pops some. We need to know that question because we can't answer the final question without knowing that part of the um, story. Okay, so this is going to help us answer the hidden question. So if I took 124 minus 36, you know, that's kind of big. And I know that my four ones minus my six ones is hard for me to do. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to use a number line today. So here's my organic number line. Let me move that up a little bit. Here's my organic number line. Um, let's see if I can do it. There we go. If we are subtracting, the number line, do we put the number over here at the beginning or at the end of the number line? If we're subtracting, we put it at the end because 
we're going to jump back, all right? So we have 36. Guys, let's always start with those 10s, right? So we have three 10s. So I could jump back minus 10 here. So 124, 124 minus 10 is 114. 114 minus another 10 should be 104. Now here's the tricky part. We're going past that decade, but we're not going forward in that decade. We're going backwards. So we are getting out of the hundreds and we're dropping a decade by 10, which takes us to 94. Good job. So if you notice right here, I have, you see that color? I have subtracted my 30. All right. So now if I've subtracted the 30, I still have my six ones to go. But guys, I'm going to make this easier on myself. I only have four ones here. So let's go ahead and subtract those first. So I'm going to subtract minus four. If I subtract minus four, that leaves me with 90. So I have 90. That means I need to go two more to get to our minus six. So I'm going to say minus two. 90 minus two is 88. All right. So if you see here, we minus the six here. So we minus the complete total of 36. If you see that, give me a thumbs up. Excellent. All right. Now as a mathematician, if you want to write this out, it would look like this. 124. And we subtracted the 30, but we did it by tens. So we could say minus 10 equals 114 minus 10, oh, can't have the equal sign there, have to have that arrow, equals 104. That's only two tens, I need three, minus another 10, add my arrow, gets me to 94. Look, it's on my number line, 94. Okay, then I subtract the four and the two. So minus four gets me to 90. And then the last one, minus two, let's go down here, gets me to 88. So notice I got to the same answer, I just showed it differently. So if the number line helps you to understand how to go past those decades and to subtract bigger numbers, please use it. But I encourage you to go ahead and write it out like this, okay? Um, so that is our hidden question. So that means how many bubbles are in the air after Mila pops them? 88 bubbles. So I'm going to say 88 bubbles right here. 88 bubbles. But that's not the question of the story. The question of the story reads how many bubbles are left in the air? Because if you remember, I then blew more bubbles in the air because what three-year-old doesn't love to keep popping bubbles over and over and over again? So our next number here is 79. So that means that we need to take, I'm sorry, let me read the question again, because the, the, the story again, because we can kind of get lost in two-step problems. Mrs. Clark blew 124 bubbles outside. Mila ran to pop 36 of them. So Mrs. Clark blew 79 more bubbles. How many bubbles are left in the air? So going back to how we do, um, how we explain how we know what's in our problem and how we know what we need to find out. Got to be that word that, sorry, we got to be those detectives, right? So if we have, we did 124 minus 36, which got us to 88, we now have to, Mrs. Clark blew more bubbles in the air. So what operation are we going to do next? We are going to add. So we're going to take this 88, and I'm going to continue using my blue, 88, and we need to add or subtract the 79. We're going to add them because I blew more bubbles. So we're going to add the 79 bubbles, and that's going to get us to our final answer. So again, 
This one is could be challenging for some of us. So I'm going to represent it using a number line, and then we will write it as a mathematician would just with number with uh, the equations, okay? So here's my organic number line. Remember, it's open. I can make it into anything I need it to be. Now, this time I'm adding. So if I'm adding, what part of the number line do I start on? The beginning or the end? I always start at the beginning because I'm going to add and I'm going to get bigger. So my 88 starts here. Now, I have 79, but if you look here, I'm really close to that next, um, to the 100, to crossing um, to our century. So if I do that, I, I'm going to jump 20 because I know that 80 and 20 is 100. So I'm going to add 20. But if I add 20, it doesn't just give me straight to 100. That's 100, and look, there's eight ones left. So 108. Now that's 20 of it. But then I have, if you look here, my 70 is made up of two tens and five tens. So I could jump individual tens, or I can make this more efficient and jump a big 50. So I have 108 plus the 50, 158. Notice here, let's choose another color. Um, we'll do green. All right, so here we have added a total of 70 so far, but we don't need just 70, we need 70, we have nine ones. So looking at my ones here, guys, I'm really close to the next decade. So let's get to that next decade. So I need to add two more to get to 160. Plus two to 160. So two plus what will get me to that nine? Seven, of course. So I'm going to add the seven for a total of 167. There's our final answer to the actual problem of how many bubbles are left in the air. So I need to actually bring my full answer. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me backtrack. Let's make sure that I added the 79. Here we proved that we added 70. 2 and 7 is 9. So did we add the 79? Yes, we did. Okay, so that leaves us with a total of 167. I got to put that label there, guys. Bubbles. I'm going to say left in the air. Now I'm going to say left in the air because up here our answer to our hidden question was also bubbles. We are talking about um, the bubbles at the, at the end of the problem, how many are left in the air. So I went ahead and made that label a little bit more detailed. So <laughs> we have our final answer of 167 bubbles left in the air for Mila to run through and pop some more. All right, so you have a new number set for you to solve. You do not have to do the number line the way I did it. You do not have to do the number line down here. You can add it, you can subtract, you can use whatever strategy works for you. And as I'm talking through that, I realized I did not write out my um, number sentence according to my um, number line. I apologize, let's do that really quick. So we started with 88. I didn't really leave myself much room today. Started with 88. We then added 20 to get to 108. Then we added 50. Draw my arrow to get us to 158. Then we added 2 and 7 plus 2 because we wanted to get to that friendly number. And the friendly number here was 160. So we got to 160. And then the final ones we had left over were seven ones. So that get, the got us to our final answer of 167. And then bubbles left in the air. All right. So good luck on yours. I'm going to add one number set that you have to do that's uh, required. And then I'm going to add another number set that's a challenge for you to do. So if you accept the challenge, 
it's going to obviously be challenging. Um, and you can post your picture of how you solved, but I want you to choose a strategy that's efficient. So your strategy might not be the same I have here, and that's okay. Good luck, mathematicians. See you tomorrow. Actually, see you on Thursday. Bye.